Last week, we had this issue from the National Assembly where there was an allegation that the 2024 budget was padded, even though the person who was fingered for that allegation said he did not use the word padded, but only wanted a clarification of an additional money on the budget. About 3.7 trillion naira had no allocation in the 2024 uh, budget. Uh, just when that debate was on in the National Assembly, uh, in the Senate precisely, there was another issue over uh, 500 million naira uh, that was given to ranking senators for constituency uh, projects. Others said it was for palliative, but that has continued to generate a uh, reaction even in the public uh, domain, just like some senators are raising more issues. As of yesterday, there are other reports that some senators got up to 120, uh, million, 120 billion uh, dollars, while some got less than 1 billion naira uh, uh, for their constituency project. But we are not members of the National Assembly. Like they said, sometimes there are allegations. Well, allegations uh, meant to be proven, and that's what we'll be looking at this morning. So I have two gentlemen with me uh, to look at. I'll start from my far right. He's one of our popular uh, guests on the program. Sam A.K. is a public affairs analyst and a chieftain of the APC. Very good morning to you, sir. Uh, uh, next to him is uh, Chinodi Olekwachi. He is a public commentator. Very good morning to you. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Let me begin with you, sir. Uh, I, I want to take you from the area of your party. I remember <coughs> during that heated debate, one of the senators uh, claimed it was like an attack on the Senate president, who he is a member of the APC party. Uh, it was time. A, a civilian coup in, in the National Assembly. Uh, somebody has intention of removing the Senate uh, president or some senators did not want to work uh, with the Senate president. That's why they are bringing up uh, such allegation in his time as Senate president. Do you align with that? Fair. Oh, well, um, you cannot rule out any conspiracy theory mm. in the Senate. But at the same time, is the Senate used to have issues of constituency project, do they allocate certain projects to each senator from each constituency? The question is yes. Has it been there? It has always been there. Mm. Is it 200 million naira? It has. None of them have denied the fact that I don't have constituency project to my tied to my constituency. Mm. So if that is the thing bringing rancor in the Senate, you know you can also rule out that issue of conspiracy theory of we, maybe some persons don't like the face of the Senate President, that's why they are bringing up all this. But it's a good one. If you have issues of corruption anywhere, you should blow it out. Nigerians should know. They are elected by majority of Nigerians, so Nigerians have the right to know the day-to-day the -day running of the Nigerian Senate. So it's not bad mm. either way, but I, I don't believe that any form of uh, civilian coup to the Senate President will hold sway. Mm. I don't believe this can pull the Senate President out of uh, his position as the President of the Senate. But don't you think uh, the decision to suspend Nengi, the senator who uh, was a whistleblower in this instance, was hasty. Some persons expected that we should have had an internal investigation with the uh, Senate. You know, what Nengi did was he had to pay an independent body to investigate that budget. And now Senate was hasty enough to suspend him without actually going through a uh, procedure of probably checking or investigating itself before uh, suspending Nige. You know, when the Senate has an issue, mm. the Senate has committees where you can take these issues to edit some privileges, uh, Senate Committee on Appropriation and so on. Nige did not take such step. He is a ranking senator in the Senate and the leader of Northern Senators. What he should have done was to look inward before running to the press, not just the local press. 
a national presentation. It's the BBC. And you make such with the situation of the country today. Anything that we ignite on rest is all called for. Mm -hmm. So the senators also, they, since he went to the press, they also did it in the glare eye of press bed to also suspend him for three months. You hear some senators advising that oh, we should have given him six months or one year. You understand me? But in their own magnanimity, they just said, no, three months is okay. It's not a bad one. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, give and take. In every rumor, there's an element of truth. Uh, let me give the floor to Elekwache uh, as your opening remarks to this whole saga. Uh, do you think, uh, just like you said, Senate's uh, as of perhaps National Assembly members have allocations for constituency projects. There are senators who claim they don't even know how much their colleagues get as allocations for these Senate, uh, for these uh, constituency projects we are talking about. But looking at the entire scenario that played out, do you think the Senate was fair on his part to have suspended one of his own uh, without thorough investigation, just like he was trying to point, at, point out now? Thank you very much. Before I proceed, I would like to to con condole with the Nigerian attorney for the incident that happened in Delta State. I think it's a baffled election. It's not a good moment for us as a country. Losing 13 soldiers that will be fighting for the protection of Nigeria. So my half first sympathy goes to the Nigerian military. In the subject matter, we say that Senator Lingi have shown Nigeria that he's a courageous senator that wants transparency and holds these nations to his heart. Because this issue of budget pardon, whether it exists or not, I will tell you that budget pardon has become part of our budgetary process. I don't know why the Senate was so much in the hands to suspend Senator Ningui. The House Committee in the House, as my colleagues pointed out, when issues are brought up in the Senate, the Senate debates over it. They are referred to committee. Over time, they give them about two weeks to revert back to the committee of the whole house. But in this issue, they did not refer to any committee. Senator Nengi in that plenary was giving the time for him to clear the air on his allegation. He was insisting that, look, these are my findings, and I have the, and I have the reports. But he never presented that report to the Senate. He was not giving it to anybody, but he was showing it during that plenary, which is the Senate so. After that, the plenary was supposed to have submitted him to a committee to go further to investigate. Or more so, to even invite arbitral personalities to investigate the issue on them, not uh, suspending him to cut him from speaking the truth for them. Because I've, I've, I've see, I saw a report, a report that suggested that over 7,444 projects were started in this 2024 appropriation act, amounting to over 2.2 trillion. If you have experience about a budgetary process, you know that. What they do, if you have connection with any member of the National Assembly, you can bring projects from your constituency that have been done for years and that will start it for you in the budget. This happens. We know, we know this is the, the truth of the, of the matter and the situation on ground. So when Senator Lengi said that about 3.7 trillion has, well, is in the budget has no trace of projects, and, and we are saying, um, the Senate is saying that something like never existed, but anybody that is close to the National Assembly knows <coughs> that the budgets are made, you know that that allegation is true. And as I just pointed out, there is a report that suggests that over 7,444 projects were inserted in this 2024 appropriation act, amounting to 2.2 trillion. They see that they know the National Assembly alone in this budget increased the allocation from the usual, it was 197 billion in the last budget to 344 billion. And you see the budgetary allocation they gave to itself just for the renovation of the National Assembly for car park, for e libraries, so, so and so. And somebody that has this nation at heart came out to make this weighty allegation. If a sensible government or a sensible government is supposed to have cleared the air, but nothing has been cleared. 
Yeah, but I know, I know the Minister of, uh, before, he, before he said something, the Minister of uh, Budget and Economic Planning, when he spoke about the same issue, said it has been on for four years now for National Assembly to alter any budget that is sent to them as a bill. They have a right to either increase or reduce the budget. But I know the argument here is that in the initial budget, the, the one that the, the Appropriation Act now that we are now acting on, was that there was no allocation for the 3.7 trillion error that Nigi raised uh, during the course of that uh, investigation when he went to the foreign media to uh, speak on it. But I don't know. 2000 and, uh, 1999, from 1999 to date, we have similar instances. Budget padding, even though it was Nigeria that started using that word budget padding. Most people didn't know what budget padding is. Do you think is there's a problem with our electoral uh, process that lets people into national assembly when you go there all you think is how to uh, reach yourself or is it the the budget process that is the issue well i just want to respond to something mm. that uh, ningi should have been uh, told to see a committee maybe a committee on appropriation and so on ningi did not think in the first place that I have this report, I will bring it to the committee of the whole, and then they will refer me to ethics and privileges or uh, the appropriation committee. What Ningi did was to run to the press. What he did was to run to the press mm -hmm. and then make such allegations. They are allegations, they are not facts. This is what he thought he has gotten. You will do your findings in house. But running to the press has a different, you, everybody has his own interpretation to that. Right? It's not that he's so patriotic. Let nobody be deceived. He also got the allocation of constituency project to his constituency. He will not deny that fact. Another issue coming up is that, oh, some persons got certain amounts, some persons got more than some persons, why all of us are senators, we are equals. I saw the uh, one of the senators, Aline Dubé, said, all animals are equal, but more, some animals are more equal than the others. So, the, the senator Dubé explained it clearly. And some senators have come out and said, no, I got 200 and something million naira as some will say, I got 200 million. You understand me? It is clear that, yes, constituency project was allocated to each senator. Nobody is denying that fact. One even came out and said, 10 billion was allocated to each zone. So that each senator from the zone, some senators got to 200, depending on the zone. So you have different form of explanation. Nobody is denying that fact. But the issue of body, budget padding, it has been a recurrent um, word being used in our political system. I don't think it is wrong when a man who is to make laws, you bring a budget before him, and he said, no, this shouldn't be there, this should be there. And he makes his own impute. And then present it to the executive and the president assent to it. It's not budget padding. It's the normal process of lawmaking. Mm. It's a normal process of lawmaking. We just make make things over bloated. I also got a report where somebody said the budget of the judiciary is not It's not part of that budget. budget. Mm. That of INEC is not there. Yeah, uh, uh, so, mm. so if you add all those budgets, you might arrive to what Nengi is saying. You might arrive to it. We know we cannot say these guys are clean, but at the same time, we cannot write them off completely. Nengi himself shouldn't... If I were, I were Nengi, I wouldn't run to the press. We would do it in house. The committees, since he ran to the press to bring down the whole house into uh, what I would call maybe 
name calling or shame, shaming themselves. The house also decided well. He is suspected. They would, at least Nigerians know that yes, we have a problem in the Senate today. One of the problems we have is that some senators got more than some senators. Normally, one such one such things happen, people will be agreed. Oh, okay. L let me take you a at you on that very instance. Why do we have this disparity in terms of allocations when it comes to constituency uh, projects? Even though we know some states, uh, you, in terms of landmarks or population, we don't have the same. But it, when you talk about development, why do we have disparity in budget uh, constituency allocations? Firstly, I would like to to state that, so that let me make it clear that constituency projects in our current democracy is not or illegal. It was our Oversight Administration that instituted it and it is caused on an intervention program or project. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you know each of the geopolitical zones are bigger than the others in numbers of states mm -hmm. and numbers of local governments. So in this like in this twenty twenty four provincial act from what we had each zone each state were given ten, 10 billion for the for their zone intervention project, the Senate has forty percent. The House of Reps has has a sixty percent of the ten billion. Then, if you're a senator, out of the forty percent that was given to you with your colleagues senators from that state to be shared among yourself, and the sixty billion sixty percent to be shared among the House of Reps members from the state, then that makes it. There is no how a senator is coming from a state. That has about nine House of Rep members. We get the same amount of the senator that has in the state has eleven House of Rep members. You understand? That's why we have disparities in the amount they get. Mm -hmm. Or numbers of because of numbers of states local government. That's why there is disparity in those amount they get. Mm -hmm. But as I said, zone intervention pro program or funds are not illegal. Mm -hmm. As a senator, you are elected to represent your people. If you want to get things for people, you will not sit in your office. And I'm sure members from these constituencies, we are not really aware of this amount until what happened on the exactly. floor of the Senate. Why is it that we don't get them in public? Even one of the senators was saying he doesn't know how much the Senate president takes her salary. doesn't know how, how many aides the Senate president has. Now, we're not, we are, we are not attacking the Senate president, but the National Assembly as a whole, the issue of uh, cost of governance, we know how the Nigerians have been calling for them to reduce their expenses. Now you just mentioned, you gave us an analysis how this money is being shared. But I can tell you that members from those constituencies cannot sell how much each of their senators brought to the states. No, we don't have a lot, a lot of... <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, sir. No, mm. we don't have a lot of political education in the country. Mm. Mostly some of the citizens are not aware of the governance process in the country. Some, some people that are privileged, they hold information. You understand? So, mostly this when these monies are distributed. That's mm. what they used to do, the empowerment they do. You hear them, <coughs> you hear them mm. doing, uh, doing uh, sharing rice, buying motor, motorbike, doing all sundries of empowerment. That's when they get this amount of money. But people don't know where the money is coming from. It's mm. called constituency projects. When the money is given to you, 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 you as a senator or a House of Rep member, you will now decide within yourself what you want to use it. Well, you see them. Uh, snapping their own personal pictures put on those uh, packages which they share to their people. So definitely you think the money is coming directly from them. From them. So I would like you to further talk on this. Well, we don't know how much each senators get. Just like you just gave the uh, explanation now. When you see these constituency projects, they are being tagged by on the names of those senators who are executing those projects. Meanwhile, this money came from the federal government. And normally, I'm from a constituency. Mm. I've seen a lot of constituency projects by senators, previous senators, and so on, former senators. You will see it. If it's a market, you will mm. see it uh, attracted. At constituency project attracted by senators, so so mm. and so. Mm -hmm. You see the, if they build boreholes, solar boreholes, you see it. It is attracted by. You see the contractor, you see the ministry that is in charge of the project, then you will see the senator who attracted the project. Mm. Most of these projects are tied to 
a parastatal ministry or agency. It is not cash. Mm. The millions is not physical cash. Mm. It is amount of project worth certain amount that is allocated to the senator. Mm. That is what it is. Sometimes they do human capacity development, they do palliative. Uh, you, you could remember one of the members house of rep or senator early, late last year said they got palliative from the president to pushing the effect of uh, uh, the situation of the country. Mm. That's why they were sharing rice here and there. Do you understand mm. what that <coughs> of constituency project is? Projects that the senator attract. That's all I would say. I don't know of, of giving them cash. I only understand that. But there was this allegation. Only you okay. were talking Go about um, the constituencies don't know much about this. I don't believe so. Okay. We have a freedom of information act and so on. If you want to know, you just do your findings. Nobody will hold the information from you. How many Nigerians it's have that time to go to it's not, it's check that It's not the that. problem of the senator. It is the problem of his constituents. Not asking questions. Not doing research. It is better for every constituency to form a, a group, or I call it a, a cell where they ask questions, they ask their representative questions, they sit with them. If you don't give us the right questions, you won't come back for the next election. It's allowing the people to get involved. Mm -hmm. If the people are not getting involved, you don't blame the man who is there. Anything he brings to the table, that's what the people would accept. Political um, activism should be from the grassroots. People should ask questions. We are only talking about the senators. Have anybody asked himself how much your local government allocation? That's the government very close to the people. How much is allocated to the local government? Well, you and I know that most times money do not get to this local government. A chairman, because governors want to hijack most of those. Uh, hijack, not they want to well, hijack. The truth is, when they start asking questions, if the governors are hijacking some certain amount, Mm -hmm. The governors will know that these people are asking questions. The whole money will not be hijacked. He will be careful with them. And what brought this issue of hijacking? Is it not uh, a joint uh, account, local government, and Jack. A Jack and, and, and the state government? And what cost it? Most of our primary schools are under the preview of the local government administration. And over time, the local government couldn't pay salaries of the primary school teachers. Mm. That was how that thing came into to play. Mm. Now the governors now took over the payment of salaries of teachers of primary schools. And they had a joint account. So that once the allocation comes, they remove the salaries for teachers and allow that was the idea then, and allowed the remaining for the local government chairman to administer. But as time goes on, we are humans. Greed came in, and a lot of factors came in. When a man does not conduct a local government election, he just keep you there. Why do you, how, how do you think you would expect the whole money to come to, come to you? He just kept you there as his student. And that's what is happening in our, in our states. Once we get the electoral process in electing a local government chairman right, we will get everything right from the government. Mm. So also, the Senate and the House of Rep. Once we start asking questions, they will always come back and report to their constituencies on what is happening in. But most persons will tell you that most of these representatives lack sincerity, if I must use that word. For instance, there was an instance that happened uh, in the eighth assembly then where there was an allegation that a, a sitting senator
was going around some of the agencies under his, uh, you know, what, under his, under his watch. The, I don't, I've forgotten that, Senator, but I don't want to mention the committee out. So, when they have projects, now when they have projects, he will tell you, please, you have to increase so, so, so amount of money from your, your projects that are coming in. And by the time these projects are being allocated, the senators has the right to assign uh, contractors who will now execute those projects under those uh, agencies and uh, ministries. Now, we are now saying that people don't ask questions. Is the part of the senators or the House of Reps, there is no sincerity in what they do. Remember the issue of uh, bulletproof vehicles, the issue of the 160 million uh, for SUVs, how Nigerians were crying for them to actually reduce that. When you look at all this, who wants to say his senator is being sincere with what they have been given to as constituency projects? I think that was what I pointed out that we don't, information is not hoarded. Mm -hmm. Only if we're privileged, we're privileged to get information and know what is happening in the system. We operate a system that is cabal like system, we understand. Some of the people we are there as our leaders don't want anybody from the grassroots or from the followers to know anything happening around the table. So what they do is when you just come across to them, they'll give you handouts, peanuts for you to, to go back and close your mouth and continue to follow them. Because in the, on the top, they are united. You understand? So about the, alleg about the allegation of senators getting contractors in the committees under them to do projects. It's a plea against him, you understand. An agent, a director of an agency or a minister of, of, of a government federal ministry has something he wants a senator to do for him because they oversight those agencies, they oversight those ministries. So we can reach an agreement or terms if you want us to do this for you or who makes this necessary approval for you. So, so, so projects or so, so employment that will come to your agency and have about so, so percentage cut from it. This is a plea bargain. This is what they do within themselves. That's why I tell you that these guys, they are united within themselves. They will not want anybody from the grassroots to get to know what is happening around them because that is the only way they, they make things out of the system. They operate because they are, the, they are the ones in charge of the system. So we have the Freedom of Information Act. How many persons in the grassroots know that we have something like Freedom of Information Act? There is not a lot of political alignment. The National Orientation Agency, I don't know what they are doing, what has become their job. Nigerians in the grass who don't even feel them part of government. People criticize if you government enough, they will come and hold you and put you in jail. I have a, a friend of mine, he, this is making him two months now, he's, in, he's incarcerated just because he raised the allegation of how money was disbursed for empowerment in our state. He's currently in detention. And since then, the government has not find it necessary for them to release names of the so-called persons there. They say they're empowered with the three billion. Mm -hmm. A responsible government is supposed to have released names of persons in power. Just because the young man raised the issue and they went and got him arrested and he's still incarcerated. So these are the information. People, when you see such a thing, when you see such a thing, people will not have the need for them to ask questions. Personally, sometime in 2019, I was I, I was arrested, I was invited by DSS, just intervention of some persons that was not detained, just because I made certain allegations about the government. So these are what we keep saying. So people that don't have the way power, you will not continue this way because when you want to raise, ask certain questions, your, your voices will be called or you will come after. Somebody even told me when I, I was in, I had series of invitations to talk about this part of it in last week. There's a lot of questions that come. Somebody close to me said, I don't go and talk anything about these things so that you don't get yourself. But look, I believe in this country. I want this system to work for us. We cannot continue this way. So a lot of persons don't want to talk or ask certain questions because of the system we operate. Like as he said, look, it's not everybody that knows that you can write to any agency to fill up information at and we have to flourish you with details. That's like what is happening in my state because of this incident. I know how to go the steps I can take for me to get those names, but I don't want to take it yet. I'm just watching. So these are what we have on ground. So we don't have a lot of political enlightenment. Mm -hmm. The citizens, there is a big disparity between the governed and the ungoverned, the followership. So this is the reason why we have lapses in the system. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, the confidence is not there. 
like the SUV something you mentioned. People, Nigerians were crying. Nigerians were crying, but we saw senators coming on national TV to defend it, that they lead SUV. Or 60 million? In a country that people cannot survive to feed two, two times daily? In a country that our infl no, inflation has gone to 31.7%. The senators are still budgeting over 400 billion for them to build a car park? Oh my God, this is where we found ourselves. Well, <coughs> as we wrap up this uh, discussion, Sam, I want your parting words. Do we begin to have a change of idea when it comes to budgetary process in Nigeria? Or we should allow this uh, alleged padding? Because well, you said it's not padding, it's normal uh, adjustments to budget when it's brought to the National Assembly. Where well, do we go from here? Well, one thing I've always, always advocated is we must cut the cost of governance. Mm. We must start thinking inward to cut the cost of governance. But we have seen over time that both the executive, the National Assembly, and the judiciary, none is cutting the cost of governance. I, uh, when you talk of the SUVs, I was thinking that most of these SUVs that these guys will be moving on will be either the ones assembled in Nigeria or produced in Nigeria. But that was not the case. It was the imported SUVs that everybody wants to run into. And Nigerian SUVs are very good. So we must cut the cost of government. I heard a senator saying he doesn't know how many aids the Senate President has. It is not the first time we will hear that a Senate President will have 50-something, some, you know, we must cut it down. We must cut it down. That's my advice to government generally at mm. all levels, to cut the cost of government. Reduce your mm. budget. All right. uh, especially reduce this uh, a recurrent budget over bloated budget reduce it we're talking of a budget of uh, uh, 25 to 28 trillion if you must do such budget we must see it fiscal all right i must thank you so much uh, gentlemen for coming on the program we just have to give way for the next discussion from our benin and uh, thank you so much sam ak public affairs analyst and the chieftain of the apc thank you so much for being on the program and i have chinedu Elokwachi also a public affairs commentator. Thank you so much for joining us My this pleasure, morning. Sir. Thank you. Well, uh, from this end, we shall be moving over to our Benin studio where we'll be looking at the attack or rather the, the ambush on the Nigerian army or Nigerian military in Delta State with uh, Prince Daniel. <laughs>